Welcome race fans here to the Juicy Fruit Xfinity Series. We are introducing to you the round of 16. Here for race number one of the chase here at Darlington International Raceway here. Also nicknamed the Lady in Black. Steve Pollard, Steve Pollard has gotten the pole there over Cole Baker there by the Noble Chasers running near the front pack here of Luis Hernandez, Lily Gordon, Robbie Jackson, and so much more here. As a couple of them also started near the back, so pay attention to those drivers of the Yellow Banner, Splitter, and Spoiler on their race cars here as the pace car is off. 40 drivers will be battling it out here for a potential victory here. It's anybody's game. Green flag is in the air. We are racing here at Darlington there as the field's going to try and run away and hopefully we'll get as less yellows as they can. Already in the turn number three, Cole Baker looking underneath the number 10 for the first position there. And out of turn number four, Cole Baker is going to lead lap number one of the event. Annie Thomas is going to try and follow on suit with Corey Williams, Cody Lamas, and several others there as they all try to conquer this tricky speedway here. And already you're going to see some cars hitting the wall. Hernandez finding the wall already just like that. As you see there, Emmanuel Harden trying to navigate his way through the field. Stephen Paul in the third in the mix as well. A couple of new sponsors on these cars there. Dylan Schwalberg there in the 20. You see his car. Seymour Butts. Several others here. As looking at the highest running chaser right now, that is Lily Gordon in the Donate Life Chevrolet Camaro there with Christian Master Jr. not too far behind. And Eric Rodriguez in the mix as well. They're trying to get themselves good top 10 runs here. And the event, if that's all they really want, so they can do well for the next two races, potentially. But Cole Baker with a very fast race car here in the early stages of this race here. And to conclude lap number three of the event, Cole Baker's had a very strong car already, but Corey Williams is right there in second. Annie Thomas getting shuffled out of the line. She's going to lose a lot of spots on the order. But Corey Williams is slowly reeling in. Cole Baker already looks like the 51 is a good short run car. Let's see how that kicks in. As Spencer Gilmore is going to try and take the third spot away from Cody Lamas. He's able to do it without much of an issue there. Baker slides up the track. Williams looks underneath. The 51 now looking for the race lead. Side by side at a turn two. Cole Baker almost hits the wall. They are still neck and neck. And in a turn three, Williams dives it in. Excellent pass from Corey Williams there. He takes the lead away. Lily Gordon now up to third. Keon Eddington making his way up to the field here. He moved down to the Juice Freak Xfinity Series to see if he can find some success. Hasn't really done so so far, but now he's running inside the top five. Good run for Keon Eddington so far. Robbie Jackson looking underneath Matt McIntyre. Scott Rams looks like he kissed the wall a bit off a of turn two there. And Charles Sanford is going to look underneath the 60 there. So it looks like Scott Roush may be having a bit of an ill-handling race car early on here. Hasn't really also found the low line quite yet. So hasn't really helped Roush's case whatsoever. Hernandez trying to make his way through the field as well. The Gunbroker Chevrolet there not able to get it done as you see Hudson Bright and a couple of others there. Joshua Sakuli has been relatively quiet there in the number four machine. So he's also trying to move his way up. Hernandez hits the wall. And there's smoke up front. And a crash up down the back switch. Oh, and he gets hit hard. That is Steve Pollard. And oh my goodness, a terrible accident for Joshua Sakuli. He is upside down into the catch fence and has landed on his wheels. And just like that, Sakuli is out of the race. Looks like Seymour Butts had a piece of it as well as Christian Manster Jr. So the caution is out for the very first time. A vicious crash down the back straightaway has brought... The cars to a slowed down to near to a halt. Corey Williams is currently your race leader here, as we'll look at the replay to see exactly what happened. So this is what happened to Seymour Butts, actually. It looks like the car actually blew up on his. I think the same thing might have happened to Christian Master Jr. there. I think something. Yeah, he blew up too. So the 25 and the 40 both had respectively blown up. So that's what happened to both of their cars. So the mechanical issues struck those two chasers, but there was a crash up front 
that occurred. Not quite sure what happened. So it looks like Annie Thomas might have gotten loose off of turn two. Let's see what happened. Yeah, you see the car just wiggle off of turn two, hits the wall. James Qualls bounces at the wrong place at the wrong time, and in a Annie Thomas they go. James Qualls trying to hold on for dear life, and then there's the damage. The ten gets Robert Pollard or Steve Pollard having nowhere to go. The pole sitter in this race there, so that's a tough break. Or the 10 car, and then watch the 4. You're going to see the 4 car come into the picture quite a bit here. I'm not quite sure how he hit him. I think it's when Pollard was... Yeah, see, they're coming down. They're committed to their line. And there's the hit. Big impact there for Joshua Sakuli. He slides up the racetrack there. And Kyle Keith, nowhere to go, runs into the 4. And then the 19 of Robert Pollard hits Sakuli's car. He goes into the catch fence there. There's Jonathan Zola and Alex May. Look at Christian Master just to avoid the wreck there. Just see Dalton Hart on the brakes there. There's Jonathan Zola and still riding on top. But what a vicious crash for Josh Sakuli. His hopes are done just like that as well as Seymour Butts and Christian Master Jr. They've got a lot of ground to make up here for the next two races if they want to avoid elimination. After some pit stops there, Lily Gordon's going to be leading the field down to the green flag over Corey Williams, Eddington, Rodriguez, and Lamas. That's your top five here. Green flag up. back in the air there. Lily Gordon got a great start there on the Corey Williams. Williams is not going to get without a fight, though, as he's going to have a good run into turn number two. Corey Williams, he had a huge run there. Eddington looks low. Williams looks low as well and now the battle for the lead is on it's roared on Williams to the bottom Eddington to the bottom as well with Rodriguez following on tow Gordon nearly hits the wall for turn four there as you see James Qualls now getting hounded by the rest of the pack he's getting swallowed up rather quickly as there you see McIntyre getting around his car as there you see Lily Gordon continuing to fall back on spots here. She's stuck on the outside line. Charles Sanford smacks the turn two wall there. He's going to lose a lot of spots, and he's got a lot of right side damage to his race machine. So Corey Williams is going to be the now the new leader of the race with Eddington in second. Rodriguez in third. Rodriguez has had a fast car all race long. He's been relatively quiet in the fat pack, so... Here comes Eric Rodriguez on the bottom of Keon Eddington. Eddington gives him room, but he ends up hitting the wall in the process of that. And Lamas blocks Gilmore there. And Lamas has to check up just a little bit there, just so he has not hit the back end of his car. As looking at more of the chases near the back here, there's Stephen Paul the third hasn't really done much. Hernandez has been chilling near the mid-pack. Schwalmberg, Hartnett, and Master are all trying to navigate their way through the field. As well, but Lily Gordon falling backwards here in the order here. As there you see Scott Rouch, another chaser, making his way through the field as well. He's been one of the more consistent drivers. Eli Bright slamming the wall really hard. That's a lot of damage to the Knopf machine there. And Bright slammed it really hard. But Corey Williams running away with this lead. But Eric Rodriguez is right there in second in the Mustang. Lamas in third there, but Gilmore's looking underneath. Contact and Fingai and Marty Johnson are in the wall in turn two. And there you see Kyle Matthews and a couple of others scrambling around to get some free spots. So those two tangled up relatively hard. I don't know what happened there, but it looks like Fingai and Johnson were not too happy with each other there. As Johnson hits the wall, it looks like he might have a tire rub on that right side. But right now it's Corey Williams trying to maintain his gap. Gilmore slaps the wall for turn two. And Cole Baker and Nathan Hudson are going to get themselves some free spots there. Baker up to third. Hudson to fourth. As Fingai still running inside that top ten. Matt McIntyre looking underneath. Keon Eddington. Eddington slaps the wall. That's all right. Uh, McIntyre let off a bit there. He knew that the nine was going to hit that wall there relatively hard. And now he's up inside the top ten. It's a great run for the 97. The Abica team really needs these kind of runs if they want to get themselves in championship contention. But Eric Rodriguez has reeled in the gap from Corey Williams to him. So now it's a two-horse race for the lead here. Corey Williams is still having to hold off the hard-charging Eric Rodriguez. And Rodriguez trying to advance himself to the round of 12 here. 
And a good run would really help his chances here. And a win would automatically help him advance to the next round here. As Corey Williams slaps the wall, Rodriguez takes the lead easily just because of that. And Eric Rodriguez is now your new leader here for Team Penske. He's doing a fantastic job in the Hertz machine. As there you see Robbie Jackson, he's made his way inside the top 10. We haven't talked too much about him. He's been quiet and under the radar here. So keep an eye out on this 39 car. He might get some more spots in the later half, latter half of this race here. Matt McIntyre, like I mentioned, running inside the top 10. There's Scott Roush, he's trying to get himself inside that top 10, but he's running solidly in the top 15. Hits the wall a bit with Keon Eddington. Hart is slapping the wall off a of turn two. That's going to slow him down. Hart, and there you see SP3, Hernandez, and Schwalberg. They're all together within a little pack there as well as Charles Sanford. Lily Gordon continuing to fall back there, and oh, Eddington's out of control there. And held on to it for goodness sake there. That was a very close call there. That could have been disastrous for Keon Eddington, but Dylan Schwalberg, he's going to get on the hard charge here for position. He's looking underneath Lily Gordon there, and Gordon slaps the wall again. So the 52 definitely losing some ground here in terms of spots and points here. She is going to lose a lot of ground at this rate. But right now, it's Eric Rodriguez's race to lose here. Nathan Hudson running in that second spot, trying to reel him in. Robbie Jackson looking underneath Spencer Gilmore. This is a battle for a position there. You see both Fingai and Vanny Vanderpoopen slapping that wall there. Lily Gordon finding the wall yet again this time around. As Rodriguez still trying to run away with this lead. And Llama's in the wall for turn four there. You see the right side getting caved in just a bit there. Randy Vanderpoopen navigating his way past Fingai without much of a hassle there. A bit of give and take from the one machine. But looking at your top three there, Cole Baker's been making his way up to the pack again. Had a fast car in the beginning, got past quickly, but he's back up near the pack here again, so he could have a good shot at winning if he didn't stop making as many mistakes as he anticipated. But Hudson's really closed the gap on Eric Rodriguez there, drives it a bit wide in the turn one, so does Baker and Williams, but I think they both know what they're doing quite well here. And looks like Baker, he found the wall there, and now Corey Williams is going to look underneath there. Robbie Jackson gets around Gilmore and Vanderpoop in there, and look at the right side of Baker's car, it's pretty bent up. But now Nathan Hudson's on the bumper of Eric Rodriguez there, he's in an older Mustang there, remember that car's a bit underfunded. But he's doing a good job there, looking underneath the 22. Rodriguez lets him go. I think Rodriguez knows the bigger picture, hopefully. And now Rodriguez has dropped down to second. He's now got to chase down. Nathan Hudson there, Robbie Jackson slaps the wall. Fingai out of control. He spins off a turn two. And that's going to bring out the yellow. And Matt McIntyre piles in. Cody Lama's nowhere to go. And the rest of the field is coming in with a huge rate of speed. And luckily... Nobody else piles into the wreckage at the end. And there you see cars trying to transition back onto the racetrack properly. Bit dangerous there. But the caution is out. And this is going to bunch up the field again here. A long green flag run. And that is our second caution of the race here. Big crash for Jeffrey Fingai and a couple of others. And Jeffrey Fingai hits the wall for turn two, tail slapped it well enough to the fact that he spun the car around and Keith Batson nowhere to go and then watch the 97 here in the picture. Watch him. Watch his white car. He's committed. Nowhere to go. Runs into him. And Cody Lamas, wrong place at the wrong time, runs into the back of the one. And that's pretty much all the, there is to it. Pretty much a three car wreck. And look how close these drivers got to hitting one another. Jesse Dalton, ooh, close call from Jesse Dalton. But Cody Lamas' car, you see his car coming to a halt there. His car is destroyed. Lamas has had a very tough season on his shoulders there. And it's it's a rocky way to end the race for the RCR entry there. As the leader of the race here is currently Nathan Hudson there. He didn't want this run to happen, but we're going to have a restart to determine it all. Pace car is off, and it's Nathan Hudson leading over Eric Rodriguez. He's got a good opportunity to win this race here and advance to the round of 12 here. This is what the 22 is really aiming for here. Green flag is out. Hudson had a great start there, but Rodriguez just got going as much as he did. So 
Top three didn't really sleep on that start there. Nobody really spun the tires from what I saw, but Dylan Schwalberg, where did he come from? He's made his way inside the top 20, 10. He's looking for ninth here. So Dylan Schwalberg, Christian Master, all trying to get themselves into the picture here. As right now, looks like it's single file for the most of the field here. The front runners, that is. Rodriguez is going to wait to make a move on Hudson. Maybe a bit off a of turn two, maybe. But Cole Baker, he's got a run on that 22 there. Rodriguez had a rocky turn four that time around. Nathan Hudson, he's just waiting to run away with this race so far. But so, but Eric Rodriguez and the others aren't going to give up without a fight there. Drew Austin getting himself into the picture there. Scott Rouch has made his way into a good spot here as well. He's trying to keep his consistency up there. He's been one of the more consistent drivers with an average finish of a 9.8, so that's really good. For statistics, you want to talk about statistics there. And there you see Austin against the wall there. Schwamberg holding on there. And the outside line there, he's trying to use it, and it didn't really work out too well. Rouch advances his spot. And he's going to get into the top 10 this time around. Stephen Paul the third in the mix as well. Austin slaps the wall. Schwalberg slaps the wall as well as Warren Keith in the 7 there. As they're slowly gaining some new spots here. Rodriguez still trying to catch Nathan Hudson here. Hudson's done a good job of maintaining his tires as it seems as he's trying to run away. And the caution is out. Caution is out on the track. Hernandez has crashed. So has Kyle Matthews. Jesse Dalton is in it. And I think that's going to end the race under caution here. And that is Nathan Hudson, your current race leader here. Rodriguez couldn't really do much on that restart. I think that car was better off in the longer run. But I think this race is going to end under caution here for Nathan Hudson. This is good for him. A win is just what this team needed after a very rocky season so far. Looking into the view there, it looks like Warren Keith came down the racetrack there and both cars collided. Jonathan Zorlin is in bystander there. He runs into him and the 62 spins out of control there. Keith Batson, he's, it's just a narrow racetrack from there. He runs into the 62 there. And Kyle Matthews, nowhere to go. One of our championship contenders in it. Luis Hernandez, he's in as well. Runs into the side of Zorlin and sends the 62 upside down. JT Bryant getting a piece of that as well. He got clipped at the end there and that's pretty much history from there but more chasers having issues at the end of this race certainly not good for them but for those running up front this is a good blessing for them because they could gain a lot of points on those contenders so there's actually going to be a one lap shot to decide it all and all nathan hudson's going to need is a wonderful restart and well executed one too if he wants to run away with this victory here pace car is off this is going to be the deciding factor here and here they come to the green flag and the white flag too one more lap to go here and darlington raceway there as eric rodriguez he's gonna try and find a way to get around this 13 car he had a great restart that time around but does he have enough speed to get to that 13. At a turn two they go, and it looks like that's it. That's going to be... Oh, they have to come down pit lane. Hudson's down pit lane. They might be out of fuel there, and coming off a of turn number four, Eric Rodriguez is going to win here at Darlington, and he's going to advance the round of 12 here. What a phenomenal finish there. A crazy way to end the race as a lot of the front runners go down pit lane. That is disastrous for them. There's Scott Rouch. He's out of gas, looks like. So the fuel didn't last long. I did not put fuel into consideration there. But Corey Williams is going to get a second place spot there. Christian Master, third place run. Robbie Jackson, fourth. Let's see other chasers there. Charles Sanford's going to get 11th there. Lily Gordon, 12th. Hartnett, 13th. But a lot of the front runners having issues at the end of this one. That is costly for a lot of these contenders there. And just like that, they are out of gas and they were out of contention for the victory there what a turn of events here at the end of this one Eric Rodriguez wins he advances to the round of 12 no matter where he finishes in the next two races he's in no matter what but looking at the results first to 28 a lot of cars wrecked out relatively early there you, you kind of saw what the top 10 was at the end of that one but what a crazy race I didn't expect fuel man to kick in at the end of that one I thought that Hudson was gonna win that because he by far passed Rodriguez and had the car to beat at the end of that one, but 
It's not meant to be, I guess, for Nathan Hudson. That's a very heartbreaking for that team. They were so close to victory. Let's see if they can get a victory sooner or later in this season. They still have plenty of races left, but the opportunities of winning are slowly decreasing as the races wind down, as well as your chances of a championship if you are in the chase itself. But congratulations to Eric Rodriguez. He will move on to the round of 12. As we take a look at the point standings here, you'll notice the bottom four in terms of the top 16.